So my name is Ken Fujisi. Thanks so much for the kind introduction. Over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to be talking to you about the non-STEMI ACS. So let's assume that you have successfully completed your stringent general cardiology training, and now you are an independent cardiologist on one of those uh, beautiful uh, academic centers. And then you are on call, and of course, your beeper goes off. And then uh, this doctor from the emergency room is uh, calling you in an anxious voice, presenting the case of Mr. West. Mr. West is a 71-year-old male with hypertension, presented to the emergency room with very typical chest pain. You did a quick physical examination, systolic BP is 116, heart rate 105, respiration 18, crackles, F3 gallops, and JVD. And of course, EKG shows ST depression in 2-3 AVF up to 1 millimeter. And then troponin was positive. So you're on call, people went off, and really it sounds like ACS, doesn't it? And no way this is a STEMI or a non-cardiac chest pain. So what should you do? After practicing cardiology 15 plus years, three concepts to remember and four easy steps to follow. So what are those uh, three concepts? Number one, Timex uh, study. Number two, grace scale. And number three, matrix. What, is, uh, what are those uh, four easy steps to follow? Number one, diagnose ACS, excluding STEMI and non-cardiac chest pain. Number two, graciously risk stratify, keeping Timex in mind. Kind of cryptic language. But number three, cool them down with maximum medical therapy. And number four, Cath them next morning, bearing matrix in mind. All right, so first of all, ep, you know, pathogenesis and epidemiology of ACS. As you know, ACS is a major cause of emergency room visit and hospitalization in this country. 1.6 million people get hospitalized for ACS, 1.2 million for non STEMI, and 0.3 for STEMI. 22% of death occur due to ACS within 24 hours of hospitalization. So we have to be focused. Pathogenesis of ACS can be due to plaque rupture leading thrombosis or plaque erosion. And this diagram right here, OCT image of plaque rupture of one of the, the major coronary arteries. So how do you diagnose ACS? First of all, you have to assess the uh, pre-encounter probability of ACS, paying close attention to risk factors, male smoking, diabetes, CKD, PAD, hypertension, CAD, LDL, all right? Then you have to see the patient and review the data, focusing on the nature of chest pain, classifying chest pain into typical angina or atypical angina or non-angina chest pain. Perform quick physical examination, paying attention to vital signs and signs of heart failure. And of course, EKG and cardiac troponins are the two most important lab data you have to review. So chest pain and rest. First thing you have to do, um, STEMI, rule out STEMI. If this is a STEMI, just activate the STEMI team. If not the STEMI, just make sure this is not non-cardiac chest pain patient. If that's the case, get them out there and then schedule an outpatient stress test. If this is really ACS, then what you have to do is go to step number two. What is step number two? Step number two is graciously risk stratify, keeping Timex in mind. What is this? Why risk stratification ever necessary? Because high-risk patients suffer adverse cardiac outcomes unless they undergo cardiac catheterization and PCI within 24 hours, says the Timex. How do you risk stratify ACS patients? You can effectively risk stratify ACS patients using the GRACE score, all right? So what is a TIMAX study? The TIMAX study is a clinical trial where 3,000 plus ACS patients were randomized to routine early invasive strategy or delayed invasive strategy. Hypothesis being tested was that early invasive strategy is much better than delayed invasive strategy, and result was reported in uh, May 21st, 2009 issue of the New England Journal of Medicine. All right, why was a TIMAX study ever needed to be performed? Because at that time, a group of cardiologists believed that the PCI was safer when performed after prolonged antiplatelet and antithrombin therapy. 
So one group of doctors believing that it is safer to perform calf PCI after decreasing thrombus burden and passivating unstable plaque. But the other group of doctors strongly believed that it is safer to perform cath PCI right away to stabilize uh, ruptured and unstable coronary plaques. All right. How was the TIMAX study performed? Those unstable angina non STEMI patients were randomized either into early intervention group or delayed intervention group. The same medical therapy was given to all patients. And primary and secondary outcomes were determined. All right, what did the TIMAX study show? Show that the patients with high grade score, right here, early invasive strategy was highly effective. And also, patients, oops, patients with low to intermediate grade score, both early and delayed invasive strategy were equally effective. All right, to summarize, if your patient had a grade score of 141 or greater, take the patient to the cath lab and do a PCI within 24 hours. On the contrary, if your patient had a grade score 140 or less, you can wait and do the cardiac catheterization during the hospitalization. What is a grade score? The grade score tells us how likely it is the patient of yours to die during the hospitalization. It was developed based on a multinational registry of 11,000 plus ACS patients. Requires clinical variable, uh, variables to calculate and predict in hospital mortality by assigning a point to each variable based on its contribution to mortality. And it has been extensively verified and cutoff is 141. How do I calculate the grade score? The grade score is calculated by entering eight pieces of information to the form available at the website or on your smartphone if you have a, you know, downloaded the application. So this is how screenshot looks like. You have to enter age, heart rate, systolic blood pressure, creatinine, heart failure, cardiac arrest, presence of the absence of, ST segment deviation, and cardiac troponin. And right here, you're gonna see uh, inpatient hospital death rate. All right. And then please notice that troponin can be entirely negative um, and you can still have a very high grade scores. All right, what is the implication for today's practice? So when you make a diagnosis of ACS, you have to right away assess whether or not your patient is stable or unstable. Is the patient hypotensive, having arrhythmia, uh, VTAC after VTAC, or you know, the, the, um, having you know, persistent chest pain? If that's the case, Anyway, activate the cath valve, bring the patient to the cath valve within two hours. If patient is getting better on medical therapy, then you must determine grade score to decide whether or not cardiac catheterization needs to be performed within 24 hours, or you can wait uh, and do it before discharge. So applying this um, uh, situation to Mr. West, Mr. West's uh, grade score turns out to be 207, which is very high associated with a mortality rate of 18%. So that means that this is a high risk category patient. And based on Timax clinical study, the uh, strategy is clear, early invasive strategy with, with cardiac catheterization within 24 hours. And this strategy, uh, when successfully implemented, can potentially reduce the risk of refractory ischemia by 70%. So number three, what is number three? Cool them down with maximum medical therapy. So you have decided that this patient has ACS, you have risk stratified applying GRACE score system, and you establish the strategy of early invasive, uh, early invasive strategy based on TIMAX clinical trial. So you posted the patient for next day cardiac catheterization. You've got 16 to 24 hours to prepare the patient for a successful PCI. So what would you do? Of course, you have to administer aspirin. And in my, in my practice, I would give Ticagrelor as a drug of choice. No GPI, because it can increase the bleeding uh, risk. However, you have to administer either heparin or bival. No fundapranox or enoxaparin. Nitrate, beta blocker, ACE inhibitor, and statins are all important. Pain control by morphine, and discontinue all the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And number four, cath them next morning, bearing matrix in mind. So this patient, Mr. West, um, was taken to the cath lab, and of course, the patient has critical mid-RCA stenosis, 
please notice that 80% of ACS patients are good candidates of PCI upon cardiac catheterization. Only 5% requires cabbage and 15% medical therapy. So what is a matrix clinical trial? Why the trial, trial needed? Because we didn't know at that time the idea access transfemoral or transradial versus also anti, best antithrombin, either heparin or bival for PCI procedures of ACS patients. The matrix is a clinical trial to test two discrete hypotheses in ACS. One, transradial approach is better than transfemoral approach. Number two, bival is better than heparin, either with or without GPI. Matrix, as its name indicates, examine all four possible combinations. All right, how was the matrix trial conducted? Well, 8,400 patients, non STEMI or STEMI, were randomized either to transradial imaging or transfemoral imaging. This is called access program. And at the end of the, the coronary angiogram, they decided whether or not the patient required PCI. If the patient didn't require PCI, the patient was followed up for, for the next 30 days and mace and NACE were determined. If PCI were needed, then those patients were randomized either to bival or heparin and 30-day follow-ups with uh, one of those um, antiplatelet agents uh, and MACE and NACE were also de determined. What does the matrix trial tell us about tells us about access. All right, so this is the data. Data clearly indicate transradial approach is better than transfemoral approach with lower MACE and NACE. And better MACE was driven by lower rates of all-cause death and non stemi Better NACE was driven by lower access site bleeding complication rate. So clear winner here for ACS uh, PCI was transradial approach. All right, how about uh, antithrombin? This is an antithrombin program. So this is the data. All right, MACE really didn't differ uh, between bival when it's all combined. All right, it's here, one, two, three, and heparin all combined. However, please pay attention to this high post-PCI post infusion. The mess, best MACE was achieved by bival plus full dose post-infusion which was even better than heparin plus GPI, all right? So actually, clear winner was bival. All right, so what does the matrix trial teaches you? It teaches us for ACS patients, transradial approach using bival with full dose post-infusion would lead to the best possible outcomes. So mechanistically, transradial intervention would decrease access site bleeding rate, thus decreasing mortality because bleeding causes inflammation. Inflammation causes worse outcomes. Now, bival plus full dose post-infusion would decrease non-access site bleeding in comparison with heparin with GPI and therefore also decreasing mortality. Remember, Bleeding is a bad thing to happen and causes inflammation and contribute negatively to, to the outcome. All right, so this patient had a transradial PCI on bival as anticoagulant and had a beautiful results. So now you are on call. Let's go over this once again. Your beeper went off and this is ACS. What should you do? All right, remember three concepts and four steps. All right. First of all, you have to make a diagnosis of ACS, excluding STEMI and non-cardiac chest pain. Number two, graciously risk stratify, keeping time marks in mind. All right, remember GRACE score, cattle being 141. Remember time marks and the benefit of early invasive strategy. Number three, cool them down with maximum medical therapy. My recommendation, aspirin 81 milligrams together with Ticagrela 180 milligrams loading heparin infusion. Number four, take them to the cath lab next morning, bearing matrix in mind. Matrix has answered the access and anticoagulation questions for ACS patients. Transradial approach, Ticagrela, Bival, 
with a high dose um, post infusion for four hours leads to the best outcome. So with that, thanks so much for your attention.